In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up your Xtool F1 and complete your first project. Let's get started. I have already unboxed my Xtool F1 and set it up and made sure I know how to use it before making this video. And I'm glad that I did because I did get hung up on a few things. So I'm going to walk through what to do, how to set it up and how to make your first project. In the user manual, you do have step-by-step -step instructions. It also shows you everything that the machine comes with. So you get your Xtool, you get your exhaust pipe, all the power cables. Um, this is a triangular prism working panel. I'll show you that. A key, a spare part, some grease, your material pack, and then this user manual. So it comes pretty much set up as this whole entire unit. And really all you have to do is install your exhaust pipe. So let me show you that. So this is what the exhaust pipe looks like when it's all scrunched up and you just have to push it on snugly to the back of your machine. And then you'll want to exhaust this outside or into the smoke purifier if you have one of those. So I'm just going to run mine outside or you can run it into your smoke purifier. So you can just pull it and give it enough slack for you to exhaust wherever you need to. On the back, you'll have some ports you have an on off switch and then right next to that is where you're going to plug in your power supply. So that's where you plug it in. This X tool key already came in the machine. You will receive an extra one that you do not need to use. It's just an extra in case you lose it. So just make sure that your key is plugged into the very right slot. On the left side of your machine, you'll see this stop button and this really hung me up. In the instructions, it told me to make sure that this is disengaged, but I kind of pulled on it and assumed, okay, yeah, it looks like it's disengaged. There are clearly arrows on the unit and it says twist, and then it will pop out. So if you see that it's stopped, when you twist it, it will pop out. Make sure that it's disengaged or your machine will not turn on and you will think that you have a faulty unit like I did. So that's disengaged. And then we're gonna spin this back around reconnect my exhaust and we'll get started. Inside the machine, this portion slides up and you will receive two different base options. So this base is if you are cutting through material, you'll need something to support your material and then you can cut through and the laser will be protected from hitting your work surface. Or if you're engraving something, you can use this base and it just fits right in there. And you even have this material guide that you can screw into that base plate, which is really cool. The next thing that I want to note is that there is a lens cap right here inside your machine. So that's up and under. And before you cut or engrave anything, you'll want to make sure to take that off. So I will show you that a little bit later on. And that's really it in terms of setting up your actual laser. So now we're going to power it on and connect it to our software. And if you haven't already downloaded Xtools software, I will show you how to do that and we'll get started. Over on Xtools site, you can download their software. I will put this link in my video description. You can also just Google Xtool Creative Space and this will pop up as one of the first results. And there's a big download button right here. So you can just click on that and then it will bring you down to the Xtool Creative Space. So depending on what operating system, what type of computer you have, you can download whatever you need. Just make sure to click and follow the prompts. Once you have it downloaded, you will land on something that looks like this and it will have a connect device option in the upper right hand corner. So we're going to follow the steps to connect our device. In the actual user manual, it does say that you need to turn on your Xtool F1 first and then connect it to your computer which will then connect it to your, your creative space. So to do that, the power button on the back of the machine, like I showed you earlier, it's right here. We're gonna turn that on. And if you do not hear that sound or see this light, make sure that your stop button is pulled out. Then we're going to use the cable that was provided. It's a USB-C on one side and then a USB on the other side. On the right side of your machine, you'll see these two little icons. We're going to plug it into the one that has a computer monitor icon. So the USB-C side will go into the computer monitor icon. And then depending on what your computer setup is, you may need some type of dongle 
to support the USB. My MacBook does not have USB ports, so I'm going to use this little adapter, plug that in, and then plug in the USB-C to my MacBook. So now my laser is connected hardwired to my Xtool Creative Space, and in the upper right-hand corner, I'm going to click Connect Device. And you should see it pop up on the USB. Like I mentioned, when I first used my machine, I did not have my stop button disengaged, and so I did not see it at all. I also didn't see any type of lights on my machine, so I thought maybe I had a faulty power cord. So just make sure that you pay attention and disengage that stop button, and if you don't see any lights, that's probably what's going on. So once it's connected, you'll be able to see your device list, and you can click on that, and you'll get that very loud beep, and you are all connected. So in this view on our screen, you can kind of see the representation of the workspace of the bottom of the laser, which is really helpful, but there are just some a few things that I absolutely love about this software. So now that we have it's set up. Let's look at the laser. I'm going to spin it around again. And I have my engraving plate in there. We're not going to use the cutting plate in this video. And then I'm going to pop off my lens cap. So you want to make sure to take that off. And when you take it off, a blue light will shine down onto your work surface. In the F1 package, you also will receive a whole bunch of sample materials. So we're going to use one of those today. I really loved these stainless steel blanks. So I'm going to grab one of those out and I'm going to place it right in the center. Now that we have our item in the laser, we can focus it. On the right side of the machine, there's this focus knob and we are going to turn that knob and it will move the laser head. I'm not sure if you can see this, but as I move the laser head, I want my two dots, my blue and my red to overlap. Okay, that looks pretty good there. So they're overlapping. And then for my design over in Creative Space, I just wanna type out my dog's name. So I'm going to click on the text tool right here. And then I'm going to click on this text space here and I'm just going to type out P-O-P-P-Y. You can change this to whatever font you want and adjust it size-wise. I'm going to grab a ruler so we can see how big our tag is. So our tag is probably about, I don't know, an inch and an eighth maybe. So I want my name to be smaller than that obviously. So I'm going to resize it. And up at the top, you can see the width and the height. So I'm at 1.3, so I need to be quite a bit smaller than that. And I can also type in my dimensions if I want to do that as well. 0 0.8, there we go. I'm going to put this right in the center of my artboard right here. And then I'm going to change it to be engraving. I didn't mention that you need to set the material. So while your image is selected, you cannot set your material. So just click anywhere off of your design. And then you can see here that I am laser flat, which is what I want. I want it to be laser flat. And then I want to choose my material. Since this is a material that came with the X tool, there actually is a metal blank, I believe. So there's a fish shaped, I just want a circle. Let's see, square, round stainless steel, dog tag. And then that way, it will change the settings to use those X tool reference settings. So it's using the laser type in IR, power 100, speed 50, millimeters per second and 300 lines per centimeter. So you're probably asking yourself, well, how do you line it up perfectly? Now, this is my favorite part of this entire machine. So I'm going to click on this little framing icon and it's going to be a little bit hard to see, but what I'm seeing on my end is a rectangle that illuminates representing where that is. So if I move it on the computer side, so I can adjust it, I'm moving it on my computer, and I'm getting a live preview of where it's landing on my actual stainless steel tag. So if I look over, I can see that it's a little high. So I'm just going to use my arrow keys to drop it down until I get it to where I want it. 
you can also move your tag. If I wanted to use this tool, I could put this in, screw it down into place. Actually, that you can see it better. There we go. So you see where this rectangle is here? While I'm moving it on my computer, it's giving me a live feed of that. So now you can see that rectangle a lot better. So I can actually just eyeball it and place it exactly where I want it. I was going to say that if you want to use this little tool here, it's not focusing, but my little tool, I could also use that if it was more of a square, but I think that it's, since it's a circle, we're just going to eyeball it. I'm not going to fuss too much since this is just an example. And once you're ready to cut, you can click stop framing. You'll slide down your protective cover and you'll wanna make sure that your exhaust tube is connected. And then I'm going to click process on the computer and then start. I just turned on my craft room air purifier so you'll hear that in the background. The laser right now is still pretty quiet. You're going to click this button and then it's going to laser super quickly. So let me push it and reorient the camera. So the engraving just finished and you can see that it used 58 seconds of time. So that was super fast. I'm not going to click OK yet because if I wanted to process again, I don't want to leave this screen. So I'm just going to leave it on this screen and then open up my lid and it looks good. So I'm going to click OK on my computer and show you the result. OK, it's a little hard to see since this dog tag is so reflective. I'm trying to get a good angle of it. Here we go. But you can see that it looks perfect. The engraving quality is great. You don't really feel it on this tag, so it doesn't pop up or like feel engraved. It actually feels very smooth, but it, you can see that it's not wiping off or anything. Super great quality and only took a minute. And I wasn't going for perfection in terms of lining it up, but with that framing tool, you can see how great I was able to align that with really minimal effort. So now you have your X tool connected to Creative Space. You can play around with all the different capabilities of your machine. In your material pack, you have things that you can cut, more blanks that you can grave. It looks like there's some faux leather, some business cards, some wood. There's so many fun things that you can play around with. So I'm going to make some more videos on using some of these things. But in this video, I really just wanted to get you up and running and connected. The really cool thing about this machine is that you not only can engrave on this base, but like you saw earlier, you can actually take this base out. So if you wanted to engrave on a big material like a cutting board and you just wanted to, to do an engraving in the corner, you can actually place your entire machine on top of it or you can swap out this base and you can cut through materials. So even though this footprint of the machine is super small, you can do a lot with this machine. I'm interested to see what you think of this smaller machine. If you would rather have a little machine like this, or if you would want a bigger machine with a larger footprint. So I will link up this machine as well as kind of the tech specs in terms of what you can use with this machine because you can use the rotary attachment that I have with my M1 and there's just a whole bunch of other stuff that I will cover in future videos. But in this video, I just wanted to get you up and running. So let me know what you think and if you have any questions, drop those in the comments. If you found this video helpful, make sure to like it and consider subscribing to my channel so that you don't miss any future videos. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Music